But if we think we are clean, that's the problem. If you think you are smart, you're not going to learn anything. If you think you don't know something, there's a time you will know everything. Because more you know, more you can say, I don't know. More you become an expert in your own field, whether you are doing carpentry, uh, or you are a scientist, more you discover there's so much more to know. Like our Sheikh used to say, everyone is an ignorant one. We are all jahil for the knowledge that we don't know. You may know something, but the knowledge that you don't know, that you are an ignorant one. What do we want? We want to know more, then we must say we don't know, we are ignorant. We are all dirty. The problem is when we think that we are clean, <laughs> then we try to clean up other people without looking at ourselves. Then we're trying to say people are lower than us because we happen to do this and to do that. Big problem comes. The ego gets himself involved. How are you going to clean the heart? Yes, you make the zikr. More zikr that you do, you're going to clean the heart. But you got to know what is in the heart for you to get clean out from. The one who is looking into his heart and seeing, I have this weakness. I do these bad habits. Then that time when he makes a zikr of Allah, when he says, Astaghfirullah, when he calls the names of Allah, then he wants to get rid of that wrong characteristic. Then that zikr becomes something. Don't think you're coming to make zikr because we're all saints. We're all holy people. We make zikr. We are spiritual people. No. More you are seeing every day, these are the things that I have to improve on. More you're going to become better. But if you are awake today and you're in gaflet and you don't know why you're living for, you're not going to win anything. The good businessman is the one who opens up his store and says, yesterday I made this much money, today I must make more. What are the things that's present preventing me from making more? It's all these things that I must look to it, I must improve it. In dunya, we're always thinking. We're never satisfied. Correct? We are working and we are thinking, we are not satisfied. Ah, if only I can have more, I can get a better job, more income. More. We should, if we take only 10% of that kind of care into our spirit, into our spirituality, we are going to gain so much more. The dunya will open and the ahirat definitely is going to open that time. So, we want to clean ourselves. And the one who wants purity, to purify, he cleans himself, but he's not waiting for people to say how clean you are. He's going to look with the eyes of a master. You know, there's so many different kinds of knives that people make, no? You open a knife catalog, oh, so many different kinds of knives. How do you know which one is a good one and which one is just for show knives? that you use it one time, it's going to break. You're going to do some research on it, no? And if you have masters of knives there, you're going to go to the master. You're going to know what his knives are. You're going to use that as an example to look at the kinds of knives that you want to buy. The situation is you always have to look with the eyes of a master. Who is our master? The Holy Prophet, He's He's our master. We have to look through his eyes. We have to look through the eyes of his inheritors, those who came after him. At that time, if we are looking, then we are going to say, we don't care what the whole world says. If the world curses at you, it doesn't matter. If the whole world praises you, it doesn't matter, because you are looking to yourself. You are looking to see, I cleaned it. Everybody says, wow, what a nice clean thing it is that you have done. But you're going to look through the eyes of your master and you're going to see. Look, 
there's still one spot here, one spot here, one thumbprint here, one fingerprint there. I have to polish it. Maybe no one else is going to see it. It doesn't matter because you know who sees it? Allah sees it. And Allah is not looking at our outward form. He's looking to our heart. He's not looking at how much that we are doing too. He's looking at how sincere that we are doing it. Are we doing it by force? Or are we doing it because we want to please Him? There's a time that the small work that we are doing will be more valuable than the huge work that we are doing not with sincerity. May Allah make us to live with sincerity and to die with sincerity, inshallah. This is very difficult to find because in these days everyone is for show. Everyone's just showing. Whatever they do, they show. Whatever they do, they show. Correct or no? They buy food. Before they eat, they take pictures and they show. It doesn't matter. Maybe that dish tastes really bad, but it doesn't matter. They show it to everyone to show off to people. Whereas in real Muslim culture, it is very bad manners to show other people what you're eating, isn't it? If you forget about showing what you're eating, if your neighbor smells what you're cooking, you're obligated to share your food. Muslims, we don't wait till our neighbors share our food, uh, till our neighbors smell the food. We share it anyway. Because with sharing comes more barakat, comes more rewards. Can you imagine now? People, they're taking pictures of the food they're eating and they're sending it to other people. Maybe that one is a starving one. Maybe that one is a sick one. Maybe that one is looking to eat that kind of food and he's not getting it and he's crying. You know what? There are millions of people like that. Like those shaitans living in Aleppo. Those ones who are really, really suffering and starving in the month of Ramadan, those shaitans are living on the other side of Aleppo, would take the food of the pictures of the food of the iftar and send to the starving children and starving people and say that, oh, look what we're eating. Why don't you come and eat? We have so much food. We have kebabs. We have pilaf. We have fish. We have everything. And those people, they are dying. Who's doing this? Unbelievers? Muslims are doing it. Who is teaching? It's definitely not the Holy Prophet who is teaching this. So this is coming from the ego. The same kind of stupidity, the same kind of ignorance, the same kind of evil. Just like Yazid's army who are telling each other, quickly, let us kill Hazrat Hussein, otherwise we're going to miss the Zuhur prayer. To kill the grandsons of the Prophet is a huge sin. They're not looking at that, they're looking to the Zuhur prayer. So everything is for show. Before they do anything, they're going to take pictures, showing to people, so that people will have one way or another envy in their hearts. They're only showing the best pictures of themselves. If an alien were to come to this world and he just checks Facebook, he's going to say, what a paradise this world is. Everyone is smiling, nice food, uh, best times, best friends, great times. Every time you see pictures, it's great times. Must be a paradise. But it is worse than a hell in this world that we have made for ourselves. So we are not those people who are doing things for show. In fact, in Islam, he's saying, don't do anything for show. If you do something for show, then the blessings is taken away from you. Holy Prophet is saying, even if you do something good, what your right hand does, your left hand must not know. Because once you're doing it just to show off, there is, it's already corrupted there. But we have fallen into the tricks and the traps of the unbelievers. They're doing everything, it's for show. Fundraising, Muslims never thinking twice about fundraising anymore. That is against the Sunnah. Why not? Jews and Christians, they're doing, Muslims must do fundraisings too. That is not the way. And now they are fundraising. Imam, before he begins the khutbah, he's going to talk about money. 
during the khutbah, it talks about money. After the Juma khutbah, it's going to talk about money. Put, put in the box. We have to do this. We have to do that. Let's finish. Following their tradition. Because they see, okay, 1,000 people coming. If everyone gives $50, how many are we getting? 50,000. If everyone gives $10, it's going to be 10,000 people coming. So they say, but they're not going to put the money in the box. So we're going to take the box and pass it through them during the khutbah time. Instead of listening to the khutbah, they're passing the box to put money in. There is no honor anymore. And so many people, they cannot afford it. But because people are passing, and this one is putting 20, this is putting 100, he's feeling now shame and shy. Now he's going to put something in there, and it's becoming very ashamed for him. But his heart is broken because he's forced to do it. You think Allah likes it? Whose tradition is it? It's not Islamic tradition, it's a Christian tradition. So we should not look at Islam and Sunnah only to go up and down five times a day. We should not look at Sunnah just by what you're wearing. We should go look at Sunnah by the manners and the behavior that we have as Muslims. And this behavior that we have was cultivated for 1,400 years. We should not just lose it just like that. It is in everyone's memory. We should remember, inshallah. Wa min Allahu tawfiq al-Fatiha.